Father in heaven, we come before you this morning, Lord. And as we start to praise you, as we start to raise a hallelujah, just you are the one that gives us the power. It is nothing of us. It is only you. We just thank you for what you do in our lives. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you what you're going to do this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah My weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for Sing in the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will arise Death is defeated The King is alive I raise a hallelujah With everything inside of Let the words of my mouth and the meditation 
meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. You're my Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It's in you that I put my trust. You're my rock, the God of my salvation. I want to love you, Lord, with all my
proclaim the name of Jesus. I will proclaim the great I Shelter. 
If you would like to stand for this, uh, this last short song. Lord, you are my strong tower. Yes, you are my hiding place I'll take refuge in who you are Since with you I find my place Lord, you are my strong tower Yes, you are my hiding place I'll take refuge in who you are Since with you I find my place So I'll sing in the shadow of your wings And I rest Shadow of your wings 
and I rest here in your arms. So I'll sing in the shadow of your wings, for in you I'll find my My strong tower, yes, you are my hiding place. We come before you this morning and we just pray that your Holy Spirit continues just to speak to us, just to move in our lives. We praise you for what you're going to do here. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning. Welcome to Calvary Chapel Grants Pass, where if you have been here, you know that it is our desire. We want to go deeper in the word, deeper in prayer. Why? So that we can go further out there. Spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus, the Christ, the anointed one, the Savior. Here we study the Bible, line upon line, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, and book by book. Please turn with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 19, verse 22. On Wednesday, we ended in verse 22, so we're going to read that verse again and go from there. Acts chapter 19, verse 22. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy, in Aristos, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time. And about that time, there arose a great commotion about the way. Verse 24. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, who made silver shrines of Diana, brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, Men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. Verse 27. So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed whom all Asia and the world worship. Verse 28. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the whole city was filled with confusion and rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristos, Macedonians, Paul's travel companions. Father in heaven, we come before you and we need to hear from you. I just pray by your Holy Spirit to speak to us that each one here in this building and those watching or listening are touched by your Holy Spirit, that they hear a word from you, not from man, but they hear a word from you. And I pray that if I say anything that is incorrect, that you, you correct it by the time it reaches their ears. You have that ability. <laughs> and I know my mouth. So I just pray that what is said is of you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I can so relate to Peter, always sticking his foot in his mouth. Two and a half years had passed since Paul arrived in Ephesus, and an amazing work had been started. But Paul, he knew that his work in that city was almost over. Verse 21 says, Paul purposed in the spirit that he must go to Rome. The Holy Spirit was leading Paul to Macedonia, Acacia, and then finally to Rome. Greater harvest fields awaited Paul. To prepare the believers in Macedonia and Acacia for his coming, Paul, he sent two of his disciples ahead, his old friend Timothy and Aristos. Verse 22. So he sent into Macedonia two of those who ministered to him, Timothy and Aristos, but he himself stayed in Asia for a time, ministered. 
The word in the Greek is diakoneo. It means servant, to attend to another's interest. Same word used in Matthew chapter 4, verse 11, where the angels came and they ministered to Jesus after his 40 days in the wilderness. Also, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, which reads, Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, diakoneo, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. Just as Timothy and Aristos, they served Paul, we who believe in Jesus, we are to serve God. And Jesus is always our example. He was, is the greatest servant of all. For he came to die, to be a ransom, the price for our sin, so that we might live. His life for ours. What greater gift is there than that? Verse 23. And about that time there arose a great commotion. Now in some translations it'll say serious trouble, major disturbance, riot. And about that time there arose a great commotion about the way. Early followers of Christ were first called Christians at Antioch. In Acts chapter 11, verse 26, it reads, And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians in Antioch. But before that, they went by the name The Way. Early Jewish Christians referred to themselves as the way for two reasons. First, to be a believer in Christ. It meant a new way to live your life. You were to live in a different way than the world. You were to think differently. You were to love differently. You were to approach every aspect of your life differently. You were to be set apart, sanctified, that as a believer, every thought, word, deed, and action based on the true knowledge that one day all will have to bow before God and that all iniquities, all sin, will have to be dealt with, accounted and paid for. As a believer, the wrath due for the payment of sins has already been paid by Christ, by his finished work on the cross. See, Jesus left his throne and came and he lived as one of us. And he lived a perfect life in obedience. And he was a servant every single day, a agape love. And then he died an excruciating death so that believers could live eternally. An unbeliever lives his life in the fallacy that there is no God, no higher morality. Thus he lives for the physical, earthly pursuits versus the higher spiritual pursuits. For those who believe God calls us to live our lives and to set our minds on the things above the spiritual. Colossians chapter 3, verse 2. Set your minds on the things above, not the things on the earth. So the question is, do you live your life through a heavenly lens or through earthly goggles? What is important to you? The treasures you can accumulate here or the treasures that await you in heaven? The second reason they initially called themselves the way comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, which reads, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. See, the early Christians, they understood the hope and the life that Jesus gives and the way to eternal salvation comes through repentance and turning away from sin and the things of the world towards God. That is what repentance is, turning, acknowledging your sin and turning from it towards God. It's not true repentance if you acknowledge your sin. Oh, I'm so sorry. And then tomorrow you do the same thing. That's not repentance. Don't fool yourself. We are to turn from our sin towards God. But many at Ephesus didn't. Verse 24, for a certain man named Demetrius 
a silversmith who made silver shrines of Diana brought no small profit to the craftsmen. He called them together with the workers of similar occupation and said, men, you know that we have our prosperity by this trade. Diana of the Ephesians was not the lith huntress known in Greek mythology by the same name. The goddess Diana of Ephesus was a monstrous obscenity. Her image gross and whose temple rituals were depraved. They were lewd to the extreme. She was really the goddess of Artemis, which was the mother goddess of Asia Minor. This temple, Diana's temple, at Ephesus, it was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. It was a tourist attraction. People came from all over to go to this temple. Her ugly image enthroned in the temple was supposed to have come from heaven itself and believed to have been a meteorite shaped to resemble... i got to be careful how I say this. I didn't do it. I didn't say it well first service, so to resemble a, I'm just going to go with the large, <laughs> mini-breasted one, okay? It was just gross. I didn't really do that well either, did I? <laughs> Her priests and priestesses pandered to the lust of the temple worshipers, now, in the city of Ephesus, I'm sorry, what? Oh, yep. <laughs> Thank you. I told you, I'm like Peter. Now, in the city of Ephesus, there was a guild or a union of silversmiths who made big bucks off of the goddess Diana. One of their top sellers of merchandise were these little miniature silver shrines containing her image. They were purchased by her devotees and taken to the temple to be blessed. And these mini silver shrines dedicated to her, they sold like hotcakes. As always with the occult, black magic, things of evil, it was very profitable and business was booming. These guys were making a financial killing. So this Demetrius, who was a businessman and was obviously a union leader of the silversmith, he had a lot of sway, and he gathers up all of the silver tradesmen and he explains their dire situation. Verse 26. Moreover, you see and hear that not only at Ephesus, but throughout all, almost all Asia, this Paul has persuaded and turned away many people saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. This Paul has persuaded and turned away many people. The impact of the gospel was so great that sales of these useless idols had fallen drastically. And the silver tradesmen who made them, they were not happy. They couldn't sell them. No greater comment can be made on the cleansing nature of Christianity than in the way Christianity, through the Holy Spirit, it cleans up the moral and religious sewers of the world. When the gospel of Jesus and the word of God goes out, it does not return void. The gospel, it has an impact. It changes hearts. It changes people. It changes communities. Cities are transformed. And revivals happen. Here are some facts and excerpts from the Truth in History website concerning the Welsh revival. The revival of 1904 resulted in over 150,000 people converted and added to churches in Wales. Lives were transformed. Lifestyles were changed. Homes and families were healed. Churches and chapels were packed and fire with fervor and zeal. Men and women walked through the streets singing hymns and visiting public houses, inviting those inside to come to the churches. When's the last time the church has done that here? Many of the places, bars, were completely deserted and others had their trade depleted. Whole communities were turned upside down and were radically changed from depravity to glorious goodness. 
The crime rate dropped often to nothing. The police reported that they had little more to do than supervise the coming and going of the people to the prayer meetings. <laughs> While magistrates, judges turned up at courts to discover no cases to try. The alcohol trade was decimated as people were caught up more by what happened in the local chapels than the local public houses and bars. Amen. People were hearing the word of God, and the word was transforming the Welsh community. Such is the power of the gospel. Here in Ephesus, the gospel was also opening up people's eyes and hearts. And they stopped buying the idols of Diana. They were coming out of the darkness into the light, the light of Jesus. Verse 26, it says, Paul has persuaded. When you look at the Greek, reasoned. Paul has persuaded, reasoned, and turned away many people, saying that they are not gods which are made with hands. Paul, through reasoning, he had convinced many that God is real and God is alive. I can almost hear Paul saying, hey, if you make it, it's not real. If you make it, it can't be God. You can't make God. So instead of worshiping some trinket that the guy down the street made, worship the real, true, living God. <laughs> Satan, since the Garden of Eden, has been trying to blind mankind and refocus our worship onto anything other than the one true God. Psalm 115, verse 4. Their idols are silver and gold made by the hands of men. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 28. And there you will serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. So many have fallen for the lie. So many have fallen for the idol. So many have fallen. For religion, it's not about religion. But about a personal relationship with God. I don't believe in religion. Religion is man trying to reach up to God. I believe in Christianity. That is God reaching down to man through his son, Jesus. And that if you believe, yes, praise God, that you... <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. I've always wanted to do that. I just, <laughs> that if you believe in Jesus, that he died on the cross for your sins, and that he was resurrected, and that he is now alive, you can have an intimate, personal relationship with him. Our God is living. Living. Jesus is alive. After his death, when he was resurrected, he was seen by over 500 individuals over a period of time of 40 days. He wasn't in hiding. Our God is alive. Satan, he offers gold, silver to worship, but Jesus, he offers life, a new life transformation, eternal salvation. Though many believe and have their hearts and lives transformed by belief in Jesus at Ephesus, others, they didn't. They were more concerned with their pocketbooks. Verse 27. So not only is this trait of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Nothing will whip up passions more quickly than religion or money or the combination of both. Just let people get the idea that their religion is threatened or their finances are under attack and there is no limit to the lengths that people will go. Here in Ephesus, Demetrius, just he deliberately ignited the highly explosive religious issue to solve his financial issue. No greater comment could also be made for human greed and wickedness than that it was the very thing that infuriated these silversmiths, the gospel, that the gospel, the true word of God, was transforming and changing lives to the point that it was hurting their business. People caring more about the almighty dollar than about the almighty God. These tradesmen, they didn't care about people, but only about the bottom line. It reminds me when Jesus went into the temple and overturned the tables in the temple and the priests 
And the religious rulers, they were furious. They were angry. Why? Because Jesus had stopped their money scams. He had taken away their profits. The priest didn't care about ministering to the people, only about making money. No different today. Men and women chasing the almighty dollar rather than bowing before the almighty God. More worried about their physical sustenance than their spiritual souls. Willing to sell their, uh, to sell their eternal birthright for a bowl of lentil stew like Esau. You can read about that in Genesis 25. He sold his birthright for a cup of soup. The temporal over the eternal. The theologian Dr. Donald Barnhouse said, history shows that men prefer illusions to realities, choose time rather than eternity, and the pleasures of sin for a season rather than the joys of God forever. The temporal over the eternal. Verse 27. So not only is this trait of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. So the Greek word for disreputed means worthless, worthless. Demetrius, he knew that the idols he made, that they had no power, that they were useless, that they were worthless, but he had a successful business to protect. And his inflammatory speech to his cronies was successful. Verse 28. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. So the craftsmen themselves, they were first enraged. And their rage had no bounds. They quickly burst into the streets, shouting, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Reason is dethroned. Blind passion rules. Truth and morality trampled by the mob. The silversmiths, they convince the populace of the city to turn against the Christians. Verse 29. So the whole city was filled with confusion. Sound familiar? And rushed into the theater with one accord, having seized Gaius and Aristahas, Macedonians, Paul's travel companions. Welcome to Ephesus circa first century and also America 2020. Reason and logic is being dismantled, dismissed. Satan, the instigator, blinding so many with social justice passion that their eyes, their ears, and hearts are closed to the real truth. America's history is being rewritten and America's constitution reviled. Golly, morality is being trampled in a systematic agenda to topple America and the world and through fear, bringing the one world order, the one world religion, leading to the Antichrist. And the powers that be are giving us false information and a false narrative. It has been shown over and over and over that the COVID case numbers are inaccurate, that there is a large percentage of false positives, and that the COVID death numbers inflated. I'm sure many of you have heard about the man in Florida who crashed his motorcycle and died just recently. And his death was recorded as COVID-19. When the county health officer was asked why, this was his response. Well, it could have been the COVID-19 that caused him to crash. <laughs> what is that? There is documentation all over the place supporting many cases like this. Yes, COVID-19 is highly contagious. But did you know that in 2018, the last year the numbers have been recorded, in 2018, that worldwide, 1.5 million people died of tuberculosis. Yet the world wasn't in a panic. We didn't quarantine ourselves. Why? Because we were not told to panic. It's all about fear to control. 
This lockdown, this, this quarantine, and, and correct me, isn't quarantine for someone who is already sick? Logic out the window. The lockdowns were not the idea of President Trump, but mainly governors who shrugged off any constitutional limits to their power and arbitrarily ordered people to stay in their homes, people to close their businesses, to wear masks and avoid close physical contact with other humans. All of this done in the name of science, condoned under emergency powers. Despite the fact that mass quarantines of healthy people have no historical precedent or scientific basis. See, it's all about money. It's all about power. It's all about control. It is all about an agenda. And this agenda, this agenda is from the evil one. And true churches that teach the word of God will and are being targeted. And it's going to get worse. But here at Calvary Chapel Grants Pass, we will never stop preaching the word of God and the hope of salvation of Jesus. Never. Amen. Why? Why? Because the word of God transforms hearts, transforms people, communities, cities. It's nothing in us. It's God. And if they state that we cannot have worship services anymore, then we are going to have worship protests. Amen. And if that happens, we will protest to the world with J-C-I-A-T-M signs. Jesus Christ is all that matters. Amen. The world doesn't need more masks. The world doesn't need more social distancing. It doesn't need more social justice. What the world needs is Jesus. And you, me, all of us in here, all watching, if you are a believer of Christ, we are here at this time to be the Pauls, to be the Peters, to be the Timothys, the Gaiuses, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. To be the church of Acts, we are the church of Acts. But are we living it? We need to live it. Words are cheap. Now is the time to stand. For Christ. I used to think, well, you know, we're, gonna, we're in the end times. And, you know, that's, that's down the road. We're in the end times, but it's down the road. You know what? Jesus can come for his church right now. Right now. I am so amazed at how quickly things have changed within six months. The enemy very smart, intelligent. But you know what? He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. We need to stand for Christ. Look how quickly America is becoming like China, where God is banned, and those who worship God, they are considered outlaws to be arrested, to be beat, to be killed. Throughout the world today, Christians are persecuted for their faith. Satan, he wants to shut down all godly teaching. Why? Because he knows the power of the gospel. He knows the power and the hope that Jesus brings. And he knows the love that Christ has for mankind. That Jesus, he went to the cross for you, me, even while we were still sinning, rejecting him. Jesus loves us more than we could ever imagine. And in this time of craziness and uncertainty, you can be certain of your eternity. You can. You can know. Demetrius, he chose Satan and the world and the treasures of this world. Jesus offers you something far greater than silver and gold. Eternal salvation. 
Jesus is just a prayer away. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. The word for confess there, it means to declare, to admit. The word for believe, to place confidence in, to entrust. The word for saved, delivered, set free. If you declare, if you admit that Jesus is your Lord and you entrust your life to him, then whatever the enemy throws at you, you will be delivered. You will be set free. You will be saved for eternity. If you have given your life to Jesus, the Christ. See, it always comes down to choice. We choose how to live our lives. We choose for what we are going to stand for. The world needs hope. They're only going to find it in Jesus. I've seen the signs around time. Everything is going to be okay. Good thought. Faulty. Because unless you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, everything is not going to be okay. That's the truth. Only through Jesus are we saved. And if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're sitting in this building, or if you're watching, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, in a minute, I'm going to pray. I'm going to give you an opportunity to accept him. No one is guaranteed tomorrow. None of us are. Just as I'm amazed how quickly America has just given in to all this, I'm also amazed how quickly disease, illness can set upon someone and change their life like that. No one's guaranteed tomorrow. Why play Russian roulette? Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary. Heavy laden, burdened, and I shall give you rest. I shall give you rest. Learn from me, for I'm humble, lowly, and you shall find rest in me. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. You play with fire, you're going to get burned. Today is not a day to be on the fence, to be wishy-washy. Across America, there's craziness, lawlessness. People are being killed for walking down the street and saying something that this group over here doesn't agree with or what this group doesn't agree with. People are being killed like that. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you, and these words of yours are sobering. We live in a crazy time, and I believe this is the, this, we're at the last, we're in the last times, last days. I just want to give an opportunity for those who do not know you. If there's anybody watching or listening or in here that do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you want to have that certainty of where you will go if you were to die or if Jesus were to return for his church, just lift up your hand. I may not be able to see you online, but God does. Slip it up. There you go. Father in heaven, you have seen the hands. And I pray that you 
continue to speak to these individuals, allow them just to be surrounded by other true believers, and that by your Holy Spirit, that you just start to lead them. And I just want to pray for those who do know you, but have just been kind of lost. Bring them home. I just pray by your Spirit, just bring them home. Turn them away from their sin. Convict them. Turn them away back to you. We just pray for the moving of your spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.